We are about to enter December as the NBA season continues to roll along. There have already been so many amazing storylines and performances throughout the first couple months of the 2021-2022 campaign. The first part of a basketball season is entertaining since teams are trying to find their identity. Many organizations brought in new players during the offseason and only now are they learning to play together. And in some cases, they're still trying to find their footing. Take the Lakers, for example. Los Angeles has all of the talent in the world, and yet they're fighting to stay above 500. But then there are other teams who have soared since rebuilding their teams this past summer, such as the Chicago Bulls. One team that had plenty of questions prior to the season beginning is the Brooklyn Nets. Despite being at the top of the Eastern Conference standings, some of those questions have yet to be answered, such as the future of Kyrie Irving. But before we get at all of that, just remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below for a chance to win a free PS5 or Xbox One with a copy of NBA 2K22. The Brooklyn Nets currently lead the Eastern Conference. Despite all this, they have holes that need addressing. Sharpshooter John Harris recently received ankle surgery. While there's no definitive timetable for his return, when surgery is involved, it typically means the player will miss an extended period of time. Expect Harris to miss one or two months. Power forward Blake Griffin has recently been taken out of the Nets rotation. He was first replaced in the starting lineup by LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge, who many thought was out of basketball prior to this season, has been outstanding for Brooklyn. Griffin commented on not just being taken out of the starting lineup, but out of the rotation. Quote, no, I mean, listen, Aldridge has been playing unbelievable, Griffin said. So I totally get starting him, especially Joe Harris has been out, and I totally get that. Being completely out of it, though, I didn't necessarily see that coming, but that's not my decision. As players, it's our job to do whatever coaches see best. So at this point, that's what it is. While Griffin is keeping a cool head about the issue, you can sense some frustration. Even James Harden has stated he's trying to find his true role within the team. He's not sure about how much of a playmaker compared to scorer he should be. Harden is only averaging 20.3 points per game this season. While for most players, that number would be terrific. It certainly feels lower for a player of James Harden's caliber. On the other hand, Harden is averaging 9.4 assists per game. His unselfish play has been commendable. And then there's Kevin Durant. KD has been arguably the best player in the NBA not named Steph Curry this year. He's averaging 28.6 points per game, 7.6 rebounds per game, and 5.4 assists per game. Durant is shooting an efficient 54.8% from the field and 41.1% from beyond the arc. It really is difficult to find much of any flaw in his game. The Nets are a successful team with a few question marks. However, the biggest question is, what is up with Kyrie Irving? We know he is unvaccinated and therefore can't play for the Nets, but this is a superstar point guard in the prime of his career who is currently sitting at home not playing in the NBA. With Ben Simmons, it's his choice. The 76ers would allow Ben to come and play. For John Wall out in Houston, the team and player have an agreement that Wall won't play so younger guys can get a chance. But for Irving, the only thing holding him back is the vaccine mandate in Brooklyn and his team. If Kyrie were traded to almost any other city, he would be eligible to play. As long as Brooklyn doesn't trade him to the Knicks or a California team, we could see Irving on the court again. Yes, in the back of their minds, they could be holding out until something changes, but right now that seems unlikely. The city of Brooklyn believes in their mandate and Kyrie Irving believes in his convictions. And we're not here to talk about who is right or wrong. Rather, all we are saying is that the Nets could get valuable pieces back for a player who is healthy but not able to play for them. With Durant already 33 years old, the Nets are in a win-now mode. We'll continue discussing the Nets in a second, but let's take a look at the aforementioned Houston Rockets. Houston is 3-16 as of this video's creation, which is the worst record in the NBA. They are clearly in the midst of a rebuild. However, they have a certain veteran being paid not to play games. Veteran John Wall is making around $44 million this season and $47 million next season, yet he's not on the court. Is he injured? No. Is he in a holdout with his team like Simmons? No. Is there a choice issue such as Kyrie? Also no. The issue is that Houston wants their young players to get the majority of the playing time. Meanwhile, Wall believes he is still in his starting caliber point guard. Houston wants Wall to play in a backup role and mentor the young players on the Rockets. Since Wall and the team have not been able to agree on a role, they have agreed for Wall to not play until a trade partner is found. One would figure a trade makes the most sense for Houston anyway, since rebuilding their roster is the main goal. The real issue is that contract we previously talked about. There are not many teams who feel confident about trading for a veteran who has not played this season or is making $44 million. However, there have been recent reports that Wall would consider rejoining the Rockets and playing in the future if a trade was not going to occur. Head coach Steven Silas stated, quote, I did meet with John and he had indicated that he wants to play and work towards that. So right now we're in that phase as far as getting him back in game shape. He's been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one type stuff, but nothing up and down, nothing four on four, five on five. Right now is the ramp up time. That'll probably take a couple weeks. We'll continue our conversation and try to determine what it looks like. 
Now this quote is from a couple days ago and does not rule out a trade. The only reason Wall would rejoin the Rockets on the court would be to build up stock so teams would be interested in taking on his giant contract. But is there a team who is already interested in the point guard? Is a trade in the works? With the Nets needing to patch up some rough spots and Kyrie Irving not currently active, John Wall could be a fit in Brooklyn. Houston would much rather trade him than see him taking playtime from youthful players this season. Plus, the Rockets won't say it publicly, but they want the best possible odds of earning the first overall draft pick in the lottery next year. John Wall would actually help them win games, which is not a great form of tanking. And I hate tanking as much as the next fan, but it's something we see all the time in sports. All signs are pointing towards dealing Wall away rather than having him return. So would a John Wall for Kyrie Irving swap make sense? First of all, Irving is the best of the two players, and we're not here to debate that. Irving is also just 29 years old while Wall is 31. But Irving is making a lot of money as well, and the Nets would be hard-pressed to find a team willing to trade a player making similar money. Kyrie is making just over $34 million this year. But why would Houston want Irving? Truth be told, they probably wouldn't. And that's not a knock on Curry. Rather, he simply would not fit into their current retooling strategy. But it would mean shedding the contract of Wall and either trading or buying out Kyrie. While the Rockets would love to trade Wall for a young talent in return, the likelihood of that occurring is not great given the massive salary. And it is possible the teams could add in a couple different players to make the trade happen, but Wall and Irving would be the centerpieces of the deal. And if for some reason Irving ended up staying in Houston, he would be eligible for games since there is no mandate for the vaccine in Texas. For Brooklyn, they would get a scoring and facilitating point guard who knows how to win basketball games. Wall is an unselfish veteran who would probably mesh well with Harden and Durant. While it might take some time for Wall to get into game shape, as long as he is ready for the postseason, the Nets would not mind. Wall saw postseason action during his time in the Wizards and performed well in big games. That playoff experience alone may entice the Nets to target him. While there have been hundreds of trade proposal ideas involving Kyrie Irving this season, this one genuinely seems like an intelligent move for the Nets. While players such as Ben Simmons and Russell Westbrook have been linked to the team, Wall is somebody who seems like a good fit both on and off the court. It would also be good for Kyrie as he'd be able to play basketball once again. Even if Houston bought him out, Irving would be able to sign with any team he wanted. As a fan, I want to see Kyrie Irving and John Wall on the court again. So it'll be interesting to see if this trade becomes a reality. Do you think John Wall would be a good fit in Brooklyn? Would Houston and the Nets be interested in making this trade happen? And before you go, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below for a chance to win a free PS5 or Xbox One with a copy of NBA 2K22. Also, don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any future content we have in store.